The biggest challenge for CalPERS is anchoring our investment on the long term. So we're a $300 billion fund. We have liabilities that run for the best part of a century, but so much of the financial markets is geared up for trading, not for ownership. But if we don't get that long-term perspective anchored on everything we do, it's very difficult to address sustainability issues like climate change. Do you think that awareness is growing? Awareness is definitely growing. Um, we did a survey of some of our external managers as we were doing some new work this year on um, integrating environmental, social and governance factors. And I would say almost to a firm, they had a, a pretty good idea that this was something that mattered. The question is not does it matter, but how to integrate it into the investment decision-making process. So that's good, we're making progress. We're going from uh, this is something to worry about, this is something which might be an opportunity, and then to thinking about, well, where do we find the data? How do we make sure that we're getting these factors properly considered and properly weighed in investment decision-making? And that's really going to be the, uh, the shift from talk to action. That's where we are. Yeah, talk to, uh, talking about progress. Uh, what do you expect uh, from the COP21 in Paris? Well, COP21 is vitally important because governments have got uh, a job to do. Investment doesn't happen in a vacuum. And the markets, along on their own, will not produce an investment environment which addresses the risks and opportunities of climate change properly. We think of that as a market failure, for example. We do not have a price on carbon uh, universally in global markets. So that means something very important for the physical environment is not being priced into investment decisions. Now that's something where government and uh, whether it's at national, international or subnational level, government needs to work on that policy agenda. So as investors, CalPERS and many others through the investor network on climate risk, we're going forwards to say we need a price on carbon, number one. Number two, we want to see subsidies for fossil fuel production removed. Then we can see better how market forces are going to take us through that tr transition to a lower carbon future and ultimately to a, um, you know, an alternative set of energy options. If we don't have that pricing of carbon, it really is going to be uphill. It'll be very, very tough for the financial industry to put money where it's needed.